A good day, good day. It's always a good day when you got new parts for your RV. So here what I got is Ultra Para Magnum Spark Plug Wires. In fact, this is my second set. My first set I installed about eight years ago and I've got uh, about 46,000 miles on them. And the only reason I'm putting on a second set is, uh, is John from, um, from Brazzles. Uh, called me up and want to know if I'd do a video on installing a set of these wires because he didn't know at the time I already had a set I bought from him many years ago um, before I even started doing any, any videos. So I said sure. So it kind of will make for an even better video because I'll have the brand new wires but I can also show you the condition of the wires after 46,000 miles and eight years of use which they're still uh, working great for me. So I'll help show you what a good value these wires are and uh, how well they work and perform. So let's open this box and well, let's talk about a little bit what it, what it does for you. Of course these are the Magnum spark plug wires come with a lifetime warranty. Uh, the, the biggest thing is also for the heat. So this the outer casing on this thing can handle up, up to 500 degrees and that's a problem we have with some of our workhorse chassis. Well not so much the workhorse side of things but the, the coaches that they're built around. Sometimes the airflow is not that great and things can get really hot in around the engine bay and cause uh, the factory spark plug wires uh, to melt and get damaged. Of course, another thing can happen is an exhaust manifold leak. If you happen to get an exhaust manifold leak, you can quick, quickly melt through a spark plug wire if you got a, uh, the, the old factory AC Delco wires. So that's another good thing about these. Of course, the lifetime warranty is awesome too. And the fact they're solid core, so there's zero resistance. So you maybe get us a little bit more power, a little more fuel efficiency, but a better spark, all that's good. And we've got this little um, RFI ring that keeps the noise out of your radio. So let's open this up, see what it looks like. There we go. And there's the part number for the wire set. And it comes with some dielectric grease. Got the dielectric grease here too, so we put put that in, inside the spark plug loop. I'm going to show you how we how we do that. One thing we don't want to do is put the dielectric grease um, actually on the connector itself. That's a no no, and I'll I'll show you why here in just a second. Okay, you can see here this is my actually my original spark plug wire from 2005 AC Delco. This is what came left the came out off the engine from the factory. And so I, I kept it because when I changed my wires eight years ago, I thought it'd be a good idea to keep a spare one with me in the toolbox. Just in case I needed one, I'd have one with me. Never needed it, but that's a good thing I did. Now it makes it for a good comparison so we can see. So let me hook this up and I'll show you the difference between the resistance between a factory wire that came out on 8.1s and these new Magnums. So let's go here to our ohms resistance. You can see with this wire, we're a little over 10,000 ohms. All right, now let's switch up and go to the Magnum. And you can see we have zero ohms resistance. Another neat test is to check here, like your continuity test. Say, for instance, you know how if you just want to check a fuse, you usually put it on the continuity test. And when you touch it, and we can get it in the camera shot, it beeps. Same way, you put it in the spark plug wire, it beeps because it's solid wire, solid core, no resistance whatsoever. Now we try the same test with the original wire and you'll see we get no sound whatsoever because the resistance is too high, nothing. Go back to ohms and you can see there we get our, oops, there it is, 10,000 ohms resistance reading. So I thought that was a pretty cool little test. Okay, now let's test the wire that's had 46,000 miles put on it uh, after eight years of use. So same way, let's go to the ohms test. Of course, it comes up zero because we've got a solid core wire. And let's go to the continuity test and you hear it beeping. So after eight years of use, that wire is still good as new. Okay, so my curiosity is getting the best of me. I've been looking at this cool picture, how they cut it back and show all the different strands. So I'm going to try to do the same thing. So I got me some, some side cutters here. I'm going to cut this wire into, sacrifice one of them, take my razor blade, take my time, and cut it back and kind of see what it looks like. So you can see for yourself 
what's inside one of these wires. So I'll be right back. Okay, so just like in, in the picture here, I went and dissected the wire. And you can see how I cut the, the, the jacket off. And you can see the fiberglass uh, rating that they have in there. Of course, that gives you strength. So when you go to pull the wire off, because you can't rely on just that rubber, it'll stretch. So the braiding helps transfer your pull down to the down to the connection right here. And uh, that's another thing that's made really well. But anyway, I'll finish showing you this. It's up close. So we got the uh, silicone jacket. Then you got the EPDM insulation right here. Then we got the, the, the strands of the outer core wire. All right, let me get closer here. We can try to get it to focus. There, well, there it goes. There's a good shot. So you can see the outer core and then the inner core, uh, the, the stainless steel wire. Good stuff, good stuff. And I just noticed like the inner core wires are stainless steel, the outer core are silver plated copper. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, so we got that. And then I went ahead and slit the boots open to see how the connections were made. Because those look made very well also. I can find what I did with it. Oh, here it is. All right. So I like how that's done. And you can see how they run the wire back in there. A little blurry. There she goes. And you can see the, the wire, how they bend it back on the wire. And then it's crimped really well. So the stainless steel wire is running across the back here. And then it's crimped in place. Then also we can show you how... What a good connection it makes. Good solid click. Because that's what you want. Good strong connection. And then we got the coil side. And that's here. Pull that off. Same way. You can see how well they've put the wire in. I guess it gets reflection sometimes. It messes up the focus. But you get the idea. Very well made. So you can't go wrong with these wires, it looks like. Okay, this is an interesting comparison. So here's my original AC Delco wire. If it'll focus there somewhere. Come on, there you go. Focus in, focus. All right, stay in focus. All right, so there's my original AC Delco wire. Look how, look what a fine, that's all you get, that little bitty wire there, how small that is like a hair that's feeding your spark so would you rather have that going to your spark plugs or something like this going to your spark plugs and even the you know there's no braiding here just that real it's almost like a it's like a cotton or something i don't know what it is but nothing like uh, like these magnum wires are it gives you a good illustration between the two side by side Back your wires to, to something better. Okay, on to the next thing. Let's talk about dielectric grease. Now, in your box, you're going to get a little tube of dielectric grease. That threw me off at first because I'd never seen black or gray dielectric grease before. I'm used to kind of like a, a clear looking color. So it, it had the brand name on it, and I even sent a quick email to the company to ask them about it. And they said this, it definitely is you know, dielectric grease, you know, it prevents what to call carbon fusion galling season. So, um, anyway, it is the right stuff. I was just surprised to see uh, a black dielectric grease. I've just never seen that before. So, in case you're curious, it's okay. Um, but I just want to talk about the fact that uh, some people take dielectric grease, and the first thing they do is they put it all over the, they squirt it on, on top of the spark plug, on the terminal, and that's something you don't want to do. Because like right here, definition of dielectric grease is a non-conductor of direct electrical current. So they will tell you, and I'm going to add to a really good video about how to uh, apply dielectric grease. I'm going to add a link to it to, at the bottom of this video. It explains it very well, probably better than, than I can. But just to give an example, you can see the bolt on meter here. See, we, we're zeroing out, and I've got a hole on both ends. Put that in here, absolutely nothing. So there's no reason for you to go put, putting that on a connection. Now, I think there is conductive grease. There is a type of grease that you can buy that is conductive. Uh, 
I need to research that some more because that might be handy in some applications. But uh, that's how that is. And let me show you the next step. Okay, so here's my process. You see I've got my spark plug boot up here. My dielectric grease. Get me a little bit on my on Q-tip. Try and get up here in camera shot. And just put it right down in there. Don't go crazy with it because remember we don't want to get any on the electrical connection in there. We want to keep that electrical, the metal piece dry. Of course, you can also can apply some, you know, directly to the spark plug. This is one of my old spark plugs I had out just playing with it. So, um, you know, because that'll help prevent it from sticking. Also, I guess the goal of the dielectric grease is also to prevent any uh, current from jumping down onto the to ground of the spark plug. So anyhow, and of course also, you know, later on when you need to get this apart, it'll come apart easy for you without, any, without sticking to the ceramic. So I'll do that eight more times and then we'll uh, pull the old plug wires off and put these on and give it a test. Okay, it's the next day and I'm about to put my plug wires on. Now I've got the W24 chassis, so I got quite a bit of space. You know, depending on your chassis, it might be easier to do it from above or below. I'll probably go below. I've got so much space under there and I'll get these wires installed. But before I started, I was curious. I went ahead and pulled out one spark plug. Just because I put these plugs in there 8,000 miles back. Let's try to get it focused. So I always like to kind of spot check my plugs just to see how the engine is running. It looks like it's doing really good. It's 8,000 miles back. And on, when I put these plugs in, I did not use any anti-siege. Uh, and they came out really easy, no problem. I may have put it just a drop of motor oil on them. But uh, if you remember my spark plug video, uh, you know, spark plug manufacturers these days do not recommend anti-siege on their spark plugs. But they've already got a coating installed on the threads to, uh, to protect them. Anyways, so let's uh, crawl underneath there and start changing these plug wires. Okay, under the RV we are. And focus, pull these plug wires off. Always like to try to give them a twist first before we pull to get it broke free a little bit. Let's get more in the camera shot. Twist and pull. Twist and pull. That came out pretty good. Okay, now let's get down to pulling these wires off. Now you can see I've done got this one pulled off because that's the one I sacrificed and, and cut up. Remember, these are eight-year-old wires, so we're just going to... Oh, and I got these cool well, they're kind of cheap pliers from, uh, from Harbor Freight but they're handy and getting these plug wires loose let's see how it's going to perform for me give it a twist well, pretty easy Make sure I get it broke free from the spark plug. Alright. And one to go. Good twist on it. I'm good. Alright. I got that one off. Alright. Of course, I showed you before, I already put my um, antecedents in there. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more uh, actually to the, to the spark plugs themselves, just on the ceramic. Be sure not to get it on the, the tip itself. So I'll pause the camera and uh, do the rest of them the same way. Yeah, I was just going to show you this Q-tip really does a good job. Get around there and get the ceramic coated well. 
So when I take those blokes wires off in the future, they'll pop off nice and easy for me. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm gonna put my heat shield on here. Okay. Yeah, don't forget those signs. Nice good click. Went on really good. Alright. I like the sound of those clicks when it goes on. Just two more to go. Alright, get the other one. Good click. Um one thing I was going to point out also while I was down here, I know I've heard people on the forum have a lot of problems with their rear wires sometimes getting burned off. And so from the extra heat, because I guess it makes sense, the, the rear one is going to get exposed to more, more heat. And so while you're under here, you know, just keep an eye on things. Check your manifold bolts. Make sure none of these things, have, none of them are broken off. I've heard that happens sometimes. Luckily, mine are in good shape. I think I asked John about, about this. He said a lot of times the RVs that are from up north get exposed to more salt uh, or more prone for that to happen. You know, we've this is a 2005 model, and uh, we, we're in good shape. We've never had that to happen. We've never had an exhaust manifold gasket to leak. So that's something to keep an eye on and listen for. But anyway, that's how that works. Got, got the wires on there. I'll just go do it on the uh, same thing on the other side. There's no, no sense in filming that. Um, let me show you how it got, got in here. It, it worked out really well for our space-wise. And just to show you what it is, I turned my wheel all the way to the right. So it gave me a good sp space to get in there. And I got my jacks all the way up. So I got a lot of room to work. Worked out pretty well. So I'll go do the other side, and then we'll fire this up and see what it sounds like. Okay, I'm going to add this. I'm learning as, as I go because I'm on the other bank now. I think I've got a little bit better way of doing this. So you'll pull the top wire loose. And then when you come to the bottom, actually give it a full twist. That way we know that the rubber is broken free of the ceramic. Because you take that off, it gives you room to, to, to twist it. And then we can just twist and pull it off. It's still pretty snug, but giving it a full twist, we know the rubber is broken free of the ceramic and you're not fighting that part of it. Anyway, that's my tip. Okay, all wires installed. Let's go for a test run. Nice and smooth. Sounds good. Anywhere. Anyway, there you go. If you want to get a little extra power out of your engine, it's a quick and easy fix. Do it yourself. Okay, all wires installed. Let's see what it sounds like. Nice and smooth. So that's a quite easy do-it-yourself project. So if you want the most out of your 8.1, pick you up some wires from Brazzles RV, the Magnum plug wires. So they'll do you a great job. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.